and hello, hello, and welcome everybody to a Beatles program, which is called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we talk about what's happening news-wise in the world of the Beatles. I'm Ken Michaels, I'm one of the co-hosts of this show, and uh, some of you may know me for another Beatles program that I host called Every Little Thing. I'm being joined by my co-host on the West Coast. I just thought of that. His name is Steve Marinucci. He writes for Beatles Examiner. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Yeah, some of you may know me for Beatles Examiner or many other examiners, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, hello, everyone. It's been a very busy Beatle week, and I hope uh, all is going well for all of you. And we have a special guest with us in the studio, and it's Charles Rosene. He actually returns to our show because he was a guest not long ago to talk about the NYC 50 uh, Beatles events in New York City. And uh, so he's back with us again because he's just a busy guy. He's and, always got something up his sleeve. And we're keeping the 50th anniversary going. Yes, with, we are. With a great uh, festival in a very short time. Hi, gentlemen. So glad to be back on the show. Charles is actually here to uh, talk about Danbury Fields Forever, which happens in Danbury, Connecticut. But before we do that, we have some major news that just broke today. And, uh, Steve, you want to fill folks in on it? Yeah, the, uh, Apple announced this morning that, uh, actually, it, it was the announcement was made with, with uh, Imagine Productions, which is Ron Howard's um, group um, and another company, that Ron Howard is going to direct the, um, the live, documentary, uh, live documentary that's going to come out of the Beatles Live project uh, that was announced, uh, that was, first announced a couple of years ago, they've now finally said that they're going to put, putting out a documentary and Ron Howard's going to direct it. There's been no release date on it. That I, I checked uh, on that this morning because uh, uh, nothing was said and they confirmed that there's no date. But the interesting thing here, obviously, is that Ron Howard's going to direct it. And, you know, my thinking is that, um, you know they they're going with somebody straight very straightforward here uh, unlike for example Martin Scorsese and with the George Harrison documentary Ron Howard will will be very straightforward and it will things will be crystal clear there won't be any you know uh, I don't think there'll be any um trying to formulate uh, different ideas or anything like that it'll be a very journalistic look at the Beatles touring years. It'll be, it should be very good. It should be, it'll be interesting to see what they, come, what they come up with. And one thing that I noticed this morning was initially they had called for films from October 63 on, but they're actually going back to Hamburg and the Cavern now. Mm -hmm. So they must have, I can, I can only imagine that they've gotten some incredible stuff, especially if they've gotten Hamburg stuff. I mean, that would be really, really interesting. I mean, Cavern stuff, you know, has been out there before, but I'd love uh, uh, any uh, if anybody has anything from uh, from uh, Hamburg beyond what Astrid shot. Um, that would be very interesting. Well, so. from the moment that we heard about this, we heard that they were Apple was um, soliciting fans to to uh, send material if they have anything, anything in their private collection, something right. that they filmed a long time ago. And apparently they've gotten quite a lot of material, a lot of 8mm stuff, Super 8 stuff. And uh, Ron Howard, from the quotes that I've read, he's very excited about this project and doing everything he can to clean it up and also trying to uh, coordinate the audio with it, if there's any way to do that, if there's recordings that exist of some of these live shows, um, if they can work that in in some way. But um, they're going to mix some things that we've seen already, but there's also going to be quite a lot, apparently, of things that have never been seen before. Right, and and one thing that they did not say this this morning is how long it's going to be, um, and just the thought of that, two hours is not long enough. And, I mean, does this mean there's going to be a, it's going to be a TV documentary, it's going to be um, video only? We don't know. That we don't know yet. Well, well I, I can't wait for the DVD release with all the extra footage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've read a couple of articles about this today. One of which coming from Rolling Stone, giving a, a projected release date as uh, um, they're saying late 2015. So let's hope that's true. And there was another article that I read that said, "Don't be surprised if there's a sequel to this." Yeah, I mean that can only that wouldn't be a a surprise. I mean. 
how much you know they're not going to it's it's going to be hard to keep this short so i don't know unless they you know unless they decide to and they could always decide to break it up into sections start out with the early years say pre beatlemania then go to 64 65 66 and then uh, uh, uh you know and do that, do that you know maybe our friend uh, Pete Best is going to get some more royalties again That'd be it nice. It hasn't happened since the anthology release. But he did pretty well with that, from what very I heard. Well, yeah. yeah. He, did, he did very well. But so. it's interesting just to think that they're going, Apple is going this route of a documentary as opposed to just putting out complete concerts. And there may be some fans who prefer that. So, but um, just the idea of seeing unreleased stuff from people's own private collections, that alone makes it extremely interesting Sorry. already. <laughs> Yeah, so. I you know, you know the question is going to be exactly what is, what do they have, and ha- and you know what does it look like? Obviously, we know they have Hollywood Bowl audio stereo. We know they have, you know, there are concerts out there that uh, were recorded, you know, in line. There's also you know Candlestick that wasn't. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what they have. I mean, there's there's also some a lot of stuff you can barely hear. I mean, I've, some of the audience recordings that are out there are not very good. Hmm. We'll see what happens. Well, that, it'll be it'll be interesting. I'm sure we'll hear more about this. As speaking time. of live music, yes, perfect segue. <laughs> hey, what I said. Speaking of live music. Speaking of live music. Hey, very good, Charles. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Tell us all about this event called Danbury Fields Forever. You've been doing this now. This is the third year, is it? It's the third year. It's okay. not as exciting as uh, compiling the real Beatles uh, and putting that out live, but I guess it's the next closest thing. We've got 20 bands over two days. Um, we've expanded the event, which is uh, for the past two years was a one-day show, hmm. and it's uh, coming up Saturday and Sunday, July 26th and 27th at Ives Concert Park in Danbury, Connecticut, thus the title Danbury Fields Forever. And um, we've really um, spanned the gamut of Beatle bands this time. You know, in the past, I, I think the concentration was on the hits and the stuff that the people know, thinking that if it was a festival goer, it would be someone who might not be, you know, as a, as deep into the tracks as, you know, as we might be, the three of us. Mm-hmm. But this year, we really, really, really went deep. We've got bands that are doing the pre-fame stuff. We've got a band that's coming in and doing uh, a Cavern, uh, BBC, Hamburg stuff. Uh, bands that are doing real deep cut rarities and b-sides and and outtakes we've got some bands that are doing nothing but solo beatles so (laughs) so i knew that would make you happy and of course we've got a few of the best of the you know boots and suits wig bands who um of course you know do that clone show and and try to look and sound exactly like the beatles and that's you know i think an important part of the festival and and those type of bands usually will close the shows on saturday we have the hoffners which mm-hmm. is Mike Strito's uh, amazing Connecticut-based band who will be uh, recreating the Ed Sullivan show and all the 1964 stuff. And then we have on Sunday night, Beatlemania again, which is um, a great group from uh, New Jersey Way with uh, Alan LaBeouf, one of the original McCartney Beatlemania guys, uh, as the Paul, and a great lineup. And they're also going to be doing the 64 because it is, of course, the 50th anniversary still. Mm. So the end of the festival will um, will be, you know, Beatle bands doing the Beatles 64 stuff. But from noon to 8 o'clock each day, just band after band doing a whole mix of uh, every, every aspect and every um, facet of the Beatles' uh, musical careers. Simple question. What made you decide to do it two days this time well two things one we had a lot all these bands wanted to play and we couldn't fit them all in one day right and they're you know really clamoring to be part of this there isn't another beatles festival of its kind on the east coast there's conventions Mm -hmm. there's other festivals that have been around and uh this you know there was a need for it um you know we went from about 300 people the first year to about 2000 last year Mm -hmm. and we're hoping that the people who couldn't let's say it's on a Saturday and couldn't go uh, on a Saturday can only go on a Sunday or vice versa we're doing it for those people and it also brings a little more legitimacy to the event people who are coming from out of town might not necessarily drive in for a one day show but if they can stay over at a hotel we'll have a you know a sing along after the event at the hotel uh, and then come back the next day It, it really gives more 
credence to taking a weekend off and coming to a Beatles event. So I, I, that was probably more than two reasons, but yeah, all those reasons why. Okay. And I see that uh, somebody I know is, is going to be MC on Sunday. Yeah, in that, fact, that we've is got, you, Mr. Michaels. We have two MCs this time. Um, uh, Ken was only able to do one day, and he picked Sunday, and he's going to be our MC, uh, introducing all the bands, talking about, you know, giving people Beatle news, maybe doing some trivia, and bringing on some of the acts. And Gary Thoreau from RewoundRadio.com is the Saturday uh, MC, and I'll hopefully be joining him on stage a little and throwing in some stuff. Ken, you have some uh, surprises <laughs> planned? Why are you laughing? No. <laughs> You're surprising me right now. I'm, I'm throwing out trivia. Yeah, I'm course. giving Beatle news. I sure. didn't know this. Why not? <laughs> Don't you plan to? If I'm standing by the stage and I do that stall and I mean you, you got to stretch because the band's not ready, of course you are. Okay, of course. You could, you I, could do I a can live wing it with me. You could. Uh, yeah, I could call you on your cell phone and you could stick it up to the microphone. He could Paul McCartney and wing it. Of course. Oh, Here we go. God. <laughs> no, but um, you know, I, I got to tell you that. You know, my my opinions over the years about Beatle tribute bands have changed. In the very beginning, I always thought, why bother? It can never be as good as the real thing. But, you know, as the years go on, especially as the reality hits you, that there's going to come a time when None of all them four of them will, right. will not be here. Right. This is what's going to carry on the legacy. So what I do enjoy most of all is seeing the variety of different bands that are out there. I, I don't really go for the bands that keep it strictly the group and don't really study the music well enough where they're copying everything lick for lick. Um, but when they do something that's out of the ordinary, like the things that you just mentioned, then I'm all for that. There's a band that I've enjoyed uh, from Massachusetts called the Onos, mm. and they're going to be on Saturday, and they, they play a lot of solo music and not just the typical stuff that go into album cuts. Right. And I love that, you know. And uh, I remember... Years ago, when I went to uh, the Fest for Beatle fans, they had the Cavern there with mm. Gary Gibson, mm. who's someone that you know, Years someone who, who looks, he's a dead ringer for a 1965 John. Correct. And he sounds like John. Yes. And that's all you need. <laughs> if it's yeah. that close and you're in a band like that and someone could really convince you that he looks and sounds like John, I mean, that, that, that really can sell you right there. So there's so many different aspects, so many different ways of looking at Beatles tribute bands. And um, what gave you the idea to do this in the first place? Because I know that there have been other festivals like Abbey Road on the River. Right. Did you want to do something that was similar to that? Well, as you guys know, we did Beatle conventions uh, back right. in 1978. And um, I had stopped doing them in 97 and then brought them back for a few years just to show my kids what daddy used to do mm -hmm. and um i think it's more about the music you know if if it, we're still doing conventions our goal uh was always to find a new guest a great guest and mm -hmm. it, there's not a lot of them out there you know we can't get a julian george martin's you know past the stage of doing these type of events so if i couldn't all, all the years i used to do the conventions my goal was always to outdo myself and and you know, I succeeded with people like Pete Best and Cynthia Lennon and John Lennon's sister Julia right. and Norm Rossington. I mean, the list goes on and on yeah. of people who we got because mostly I was friends with these people from going to Liverpool and meeting them and hanging with them and their families and, you know, hitting it off that way. I would invite them over and they would come as guests. So back then it was always... The guests were the were primary, the most important thing. The Beatle bands were secondary. The Needles, mm -hmm. whoever we brought, were great. And then the memorabilia, of course, and the dealers was a big thing. So now I think with the festival, the focus is completely on the music with uh, some aspect of the memorabilia and the dealers because we still have a uh, half dozen, dozen vendors mm -hmm. selling all the cool stuff and the food vendors and everything else. But it's a, we, when you mention uh, family-friendly things and more appetizing for a family, I think the festival succeeds more than a convention does. It's a better way to introduce younger fans to the music. You know, uh, anywhere you walk, you, 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 if you're buying, uh, you know, ices or you're going to get a pizza or you're buying some memorabilia, the music is still coming from the stage. It's a, mm -hmm. such a great setting that you really can't miss the music. And if, uh, you know, younger fans, we used to say, oh, these conventions are great. Parents are bringing their kids. Well, now it's grandparents mm -hmm. bringing their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if we can keep, the, as the Beatle bands are doing, keeping the spirit alive and introducing new generations to maybe music they wouldn't have known otherwise, uh, I think that's a good purpose for such a for such an event. Hmm. Yeah, Beatle music has a tendency to bring out all generations. Uh, you know, having seen Ringo Sunday night, I mean, there were all generations there, and uh, 
it's really heartening to see that type of thing, you know. Charles, what else is going to be there besides the band? You're going to have you're going to have dealers with memorabilia. What else are you going to? Yeah, have? we have a bunch of dealers. Uh, some of the ones who go to all the fests, and you know, some of the ones who. Uh, just are cleaning out their closet, so people are going to get some, you know, really cool deals. But the, f- for the first time, we're bringing in a few special guests on um, on the Saturday, the 26th. We've got a gentleman who was a big part of the British invasion uh, and hasn't been in America in 35 years. He was a founding member, backup vocalist, uh, songwriter, and bassist for the Herman's Hermits, and that's Carl Green. And that's a big score, a big coup, just because um, he's never done this type of thing before. So he'll be there uh, as a meet-and-greet, autograph session kind of guy. And then on Sunday, we've got um, Ian Lloyd, who's a a friend, who, um, interestingly enough, we we hadn't had him on the bill. He was on the bill uh, for our Beatles 50th anniversary, NYC Fab 50 in New York. Mm -hmm. And he said, Charles, you're doing something in Connecticut, and you didn't invite me? And I said, (laughs) well, you know, this is more like Beatle tribute. He goes, I want to be there, and I'm going to do another great Beatles set. Mm-hmm. And when a rock star, you know, who had hits and is charted and has been, you know, with Foreigner and the stories and calls, you can't say no. Mm-hmm. And so I said, ah, we'd be honored. So our special guest on uh, Sunday, the 27th, is Ian Lloyd from the group uh, The Stories, who had the big hit, Brother Louie. And we're going to allow him to do that one song along with uh, all the Beatles stuff he's doing. And he's gone deep, too. He's doing a lot of uh, Harrison stuff. Nice. So that's exciting, yeah. Wow. How okay. did you get Carl Green? That's a- that's what I want to know. Carl Green was a fluke. Um, there was a Kickstarter campaign about getting him over to the States. And um, he. Uh, there's a group, I think they're called Something Good. And they're a Hermit's <laughs> tribute band. There's actually such a thing. And uh, the lead guy uh, invited him over to do some local pubs and local clubs, I guess Long Island or, or, or White Plains. I'm really not sure where, but he's doing a bunch of one-offs. And... Uh, uh, the the festival just fit in on the time that he was here, and we invited him, and he said yes, and uh, we're just really excited. Maybe we'll even get him to do a song or two if we can uh, twist his arm. It was oh, funny. Wow. I was watching, I guess, uh, Turner Classics had uh, Hold On and Mrs. Yeah. Brown, You've Got a Lovely Daughter right. as part of a whole um, rock and roll uh, right. retro series. And I watch them both, and I mean, they don't hold a candle to Hard Day's Night or Help or any of the no. Beatles films, but the music's cool, and Carl Green is second build on the films. So I guess he's the second most important hermit after Peter Noon. Yeah, and in, in, in uh, Mrs. Brown, they actually, he, he actually gets to say something. I don't think, I don't think I got to say too much. Yeah, in, he got some lines, on, it's true. <laughs> in Mrs. Brown, they actually had some speaking parts uh, to let you see who they were. It wasn't just uh, Peter Noon there, but... Uh, so yeah, that was and I uh, that was kind of funny. I was I was watching that. I watched them too, and I was I was laughing uh, the way that those movies were. It was amazing what they tried to you know they really tried to make their own Hard Day's Night. And that's uh, true. Well, anyway. along with the twenty bands and the two special guests, we've also got um, the Connecticut and New York School of Rock students coming in to do a set, and then there's this talent show online called Star on the Web. Dot com and the winners of that are going to be performing too. So it's got so many, so many nice aspects to this uh, festival on July twenty sixth uh, and twenty seventh in Danbury, Connecticut. We're just really excited about all the elements of the show that's uh, that makes it come together and be a great event. Uh, tell us about there's a an incredible artist named Shannon mm. who uh, you've you've worked with her for quite a while now. She was a part of the last few Danbury Fields Forever festivals. Tell us about her work and and how extraordinary that is. Ken, I'm so glad you asked because Shannon is such an amazing artist on so many levels. She's a great musician. She's a great humanitarian, and and her artwork is just unbelievable. And we we, uh, take advantage of her. We use her (laughs) great art on everything we do on the Beatles' 50th anniversary in New York and again for Danbury Fields. All the murals, we, we really decorate Ives Concert Park with gigantic murals and right. it's all her artwork and people walk around thinking that it's Beatle photos and then they look a little closer and it's wow this is artwork mm-hmm. and um, you know that's one, it's another part we call it a, a music art and uh, food festival right. and the, the aspect of it being an art is uh, we've got two artists who usually come and, and, and exhibit their work and also the food because they'll be bringing all the food vendors but the music is again above and beyond all. Can I list some of the other acts who are Absolutely. joining us? Yeah. So we mentioned uh, Beatlemania again and the Hoffners who are the headliners also the mystery tour from uh, 
from Connecticut who are coming in doing uh, Pepper and all that stuff. Our friend Mike Miller, who's one of the great McCartney lookalikes, mm-hmm. is coming with his band uh, One Sweet Dream to do a McCartney set. Pete Santora, who was one of the early uh, George Harrisons in Beatlemania, is doing his Harrison show. And uh, Dave Powell, uh, I think Pennsylvania, is coming in to do his Lennon Legacy show. So aside from Ringo, we've got the three uh, three Beatles <laughs> solo shows covered. The other two solo acts are, as you mentioned, the Onos, who are from Massachusetts and are, are amazing, and After Fab, right. who are uh, similar to the Onos in that they do the solo stuff. And for um, bands you know, covering the Beatles and doing their versions of it, we've got Genetic Control, who are coming back. They've been with us before. They're a hard rock and young. I call them like a psychedelic uh, Beatles band. Right. They're from the Bronx, and they kind of do Beatles in the style of Zeppelin. That's true, yeah. It's and, different. It's a completely different approach. And their yeah. um, contemporaries are a band called Rotary, from the Hartford area, Rotary um, came to our Beatles Expo years uh, a few years back, and because it was the end of the year, they did a whole Beatles um, set of Christmas music done Beatles style. Oh wow! Um, so they're really creative, and we're really looking forward to the, their song choices because they go deep into the catalog. The other um, guests we have are uh, the other performers are Charlie Guitar, who's a real great guitar virtuoso. Uh, the Wayback Machine from Fairfield, Connecticut, who are doing a, a, a lot of early Beatles stuff, but I think they're throwing in some Billy J. Kramer and Jerry and the Pacemakers nice. as, as a nice treat. Mm-hmm. And I think the only band I left out was a group called Studio Two, and they're probably the um, the youngest guys on the bill, and that's apropos because they're the ones doing the BBC Hamburg Cavern stuff. Okay. Um, so all in all, it's ten bands a day and uh, just just unlimited music and fun. You know, I, I see the, the names of these bands all the time on Facebook, and most of the time I never get to see them. Yeah. So it's nice to see them all together in one area. All together over, now in one place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's great. And and the best thing is y- you live in the area, you get exposed to these bands, you pick out the ones that you like the best, and then you start to follow them. Oh, good point. And, uh, you know, you might go on their website, find out where they're playing, seeing if they have the CD out or whatever, and uh, then you then you continue following their it's really worth. Uh, I wish you were closer, Steve, because it's a it's a great event. And I, it's I wish I was too. I people on the too. East Coast. Let me ask you a question, John. Yeah. It seems to me like the 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 convention thing is really starting to pick up again. Not just because of the 50th anniversary, but I mean, it seems like you know between you and Abbey Road on the River and the, and the Fest, and there's also you know there's several in Europe too. But it seems like everything is kind of picking up. Is that is that a good is it's it's you know what it's like it's like a uh, it's like a kitty roller coaster. It never really just jumps you know oh my god this year was ten times the amount of people in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it, it you know when Paul tours when when it's an anniversary yeah it, it picks up and it gets a lot more excitement and I think what it is is, is some of these events also become um, not uh, habitual in a good way you know people go because they see their friends from year to year uh, they they see people who you know they've they, they've become close with as you know beetle friends and it's the same with our tours when we go to liverpool every summer and we do the you know magical history tour to, to london and liverpool you know we got people who not only come uh multiple times but when they go back home they stay in touch through facebook through emails through phone calls they become lifelong friends so these type of events don't just draw you know your local fans they draw people who will come year to year to year and you know there's people who've been like to the fest for beetle fans uh, the first time I probably went was in the in the late seventies, and I try to go whenever I can. And I, I would like to think that uh, you know Danbury Fields Forever will uh, build up in that same way, where people will go from year to year and you know compare the bands from year to year and have fun the same way. And people can find out about it at the uh, website www.fab4musicfestival.com, and that's the number four, fab4musicfestival.com. This may seem like a silly question, but I'm going to pose it to you anyway. Have you ever thought about doing the festival indoors? Because we have had the problem a few years ago. It rained yeah. um, on the weekend. I, I'm not sure if, yeah, well, it's one day thing then. Yeah. But um, just to secure the fact that it will go on yeah. and uh, make it easier on everybody else. It's like saying, well, if they did Woodstock every year, should they move it in because there's a chance of rain? I, I mm-hmm. don't know. There's something about a festival of this sort that, you know, just if, I, I think it screams that it needs to be outside. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, that, that um, these type of shows, if, if they're indoors, they become just a concert. 
you know, the, right. the being un- under the same roof and in the same four walls, you know, from noon to eight o'clock might, you know, it doesn't have that same um, sexiness of being able to walk around and visit uh, dealers and take a walk on the lawn and visit, you know, the food vendors. It, I don't know. I don't think it would have the same cachet as if, if it was indoors. Okay. Yeah, good point. See, that wouldn't happen out here because it's, it's not going to rain in July out here. So. That's true. Thanks hey. a lot. So let's do that there. Please find me a venue. <laughs> find me a venue, and I will bring I will bring it to uh, San Francisco or Oakland okay. or so at San Jose or San Diego or wherever you feel we would do it. Okay. Okay. That's um that's the challenge on the air officially. Uh oh. Steve, I will co-produce it with you. Okay. It'll and be me. Liverpool Productions. No, oh, you have boy. nothing to do with this. Guy. It'll be <laughs> Liverpool Productions and Examiner Beatles Examiner dot <laughs> com present. Oh boy. And, but we'll fly Ken out to MC. Is that, that that cool? There we go. Yeah, and I'll just have to put together whatever trivia I can in between the in between <laughs> We'll the let act. you know the week before. Okay, yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah, that, that's right. We'll wait until the week before. <laughs> you know, know what they say, go. Charles? What do they say? It never rains in Southern California. That's but right. when the rain <laughs> comes, we don't run and hide our heads. We enjoy the music anyway. It goes mm. on rain or shine. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's true. So yeah. what what plans have you got for the rest of the year? Charles after Danbury Fields. Well, the following month, August 17th through the 27th, we're going to back to London, Liverpool, and uh, um, Henley, and we're doing our annual Beatles tour that we do every year. This is our 31st year, and um, yeah, it's a 50th anniversary tour because it's 50th anniversary of the Beatles, but it's our 31st anniversary, and um, we're looking forward to next year because in 2015, we're going to Hamburg, and we haven't done that in many years. So we're trying well, to get and I and, and I'm Joanne telling you to go to that one. Yes, me and my wife. And the the fact that it's also Hamburg makes it so attractive because I definitely want to go to Hamburg. So I'm pretty close to committing right now. And so. it's so hard to believe that the Indra and Kaiser Keller and Top Ten they're still there. They're still there and they're still, you know, working nightclubs. So we have our parties in those places and then we, you know, follow in the footsteps of the Beatles, um, not just in Hamburg, but of course in London and Liverpool. So uh, We've already gotten a better response for next year returning uh, to Hamburg than we've gotten in the past 10 years, aside from last year when we went into Abbey Road Studios again. Mm. Wow. So those what are you, what have you got like, planned this year? This year is, um, I don't know, nothing special. If you're going on this year's tour, guys, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. What it is, what's really amazing, Steve, is every year there's something different. I mean, I myself go every year, and I think, oh, gosh, you know, how can I do these same things again? Well, I I love it because I'm living it through the people who are going for the first time. But every year, Cavern City Tours, who are our sister partner in Liverpool, put on different events. I mean, uh, two years ago, it was a Sefton Park Festival. Uh, Three, four years ago, it was a Penny Lane Festival. There's always something different and something special in Liverpool. What's really cool is we've got Chris Montez and Tommy Rowe together as special guests. And they're going to be in Liverpool not only at the convention for meet and greets, but they'll be performing at the Cavern for our goodbye party. So, uh, you know, when I when I said I was being funny when I said there's nothing special this year, but there's always new things. A couple of years back before they closed Strawberry Field, there was a Strawberry Field, a garden party where bands actually played on the grounds of the orphanage. Oh, nice. So every year there's always that something special that you don't know is going to happen really until uh, Liverpool itself announces it. And and that's what makes these tours just so, so amazing. And the wow. website for that is LiverpoolTours.com, www.LiverpoolTours.com. Fantastic. All right. So before we we uh, end the show, Steve, I know that you got to see Ringo in concert. Yeah, what was that on, like? Wow. It's on Sunday night in San Jose, and uh, he was. I thought the band was really good. I thought I thought the band was. I mean, I, and I think Ken, when you saw them, you said this. They were a lot more together. The the experience of the band being together for a while has really sharpened them, and that I noticed that right off the bat. Hmm. As soon as they kicked off Matchbox, you could you could really hear that they were that the uh, you know the time these guys have spent together has definitely been worth it. And I also seem to notice, and I didn't I didn't check this out, I didn't uh, do a lot of research to to check it though, is that Ringo drummed more. Uh, he took a lot fewer breaks than before. He he drummed through most of the show, and it seems to me in past shows. There were long breaks where he didn't, and um, he even drummed on 
on uh, Bang the Drum this year, which I don't rem- I, as I recall he did not do before. Yeah, he, he did. did. He did it this time. <laughs> No, he he's drummed on that song. He's drummed on that before. I think okay. what you're confusing uh, the times when the All Star bands have had solo numbers where one member will come out and just be alone, right. and then the rest of the band is just not there, or maybe there's a second member of the All Star there to accompany him. Right. So Ringo's not there. But usually Ringo will just be absent on one song in the middle of the set. Mm-hmm. Like uh, on this tour, he wasn't playing on Black Magic Woman, but okay. he was on. All the other songs, he was either singing up front or he was drumming behind. Right. But I wouldn't say he's he's drumming more than he normally does. Okay, but I, I, it just seems to me I kept waiting for him to take you know to go off. The, and he also didn't drum really during. Um, uh, well, yeah, you're right about Oye Komova because he he didn't leave the stage. Right. He sat he sat on the stage, and you know pretended to drum on bongos or whatever he was tra- pretending to do. But uh, he was there, uh, and he was uh, really interacting with the crowd a lot, mm-hmm. an awful lot. In fact, there were two women on to the left side of the stage right near where we were sitting that were jumping all around all night long, and he noticed them more than once, and they were just freaking out completely. They were loving it. They were absolutely loving it. Well, he's certainly much looser on stage when it comes to ad-libbing or, or just interacting with the audience. Right. He said there was, there was one great moment that I mentioned in, in the story I wrote, where this guy yells out, Ringo, my wife loves you. And Ringo, without missing a beat, says, mine does too. <laughs> that was beautiful. I thought that was fun. It was, a, it was a fun evening. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, this is a killer lineup, as are you know all the all-star bands. But what I did notice is that certainly for the songs that require more jamming or songs that lend itself to jamming mm-hmm. like the Santana songs and the Toto songs there was there was much more jamming done <laughs> on this much, tour and they were much more capable of doing it than yeah. than some of the other bands and that's probably one of the reasons why Ringo likes them as I said as I started out the review these guys are really a band as opposed to some of the past all-stars I I um don't want to be controversial mm-hmm. but I would have rather had a new lineup of all stars, even if they're not as tight and it's not as you know. I'd rather mm-hmm. see new bodies up there, and I hope Ringo, you know, as much as he loves this lineup, and I hope he retor- you know, uh, records with them. Mm-hmm. I hope he enlists a new lineup for the next time around. Okay, well, see, I'd, I'd like that. to see him. I would like to see him record with them, and that apparently is not happening. Oh. Um, he's using. He's doing the same situation as before where he's grabbing friends and, and putting them on the album Lukather is on the album because Lukather has been tweeting about it but you know yeah I, 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 I agree I was watching the Roundheads DVD the other day and it's a, and you know you really wish that that kind of situation would take hold where he would be more you know be more him but what can we say hey, hmm. we should just be thankful that he and Paul are out there touring and you know, and, and loving it, and you know, bringing so much joy to the fans. That's right. True. I mean, he, he, you can't get over the fact of watching him that he's, a, you know, he's practically ageless on that stage. He's in such great, great shape, and especially watching him do those jumping jacks at the <laughs> end is is just amazing. Yeah, and at at this stage, you know, the time that that Paul and Ringo have are precious. Mm-hmm. So whatever time they give to us, we should be thankful for. We yeah. are definitely Indeed. thankful. It's not just the touring. It's also the new recordings that they make, too. So. 100%. Right. right. Okay. All right. So, Charles, it's been great having you. Oh, and I'll, I'll be seeing you next week. Yes. Where is MC? that again? Where? Danbury Fields Forever. What's the date? It's July 26th and 27th. I know the 27th, definitely, because I have to be there. <laughs> Um, and that's at the Ives Concert Park in Danbury, right. Connecticut. Yeah, it's a great venue, folks. And if you can, please, please come on over and uh, enjoy the bands because there's so many different ones there, and I'm sure that there's going to be plenty that you will like and uh, may be curious enough to investigate time in and and uh, follow their their uh, careers, whatever they're they're doing in the area. There we go. All right, so if any of you would like to get in touch with us, we have an email address, which is things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. There's a number of ways that you can get in touch with just Steve, if you want to avoid me totally. And that is how. Beatlesexaminer at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook. 
I'm all over Facebook, actually, because I have a couple of pages. Um, but be, uh, on examiner.com, just look for Beatles Examiner, and you'll find my name. And and But uh, Beatles Examiner at gmail.com is the easiest way to get to me. Okay. And uh, we have our own Facebook page, The Things We Said Today. I have my own at Ken Michaels. I have a website, KenMichaelsRadio.com, with lots of trivia every single week. I warm up with all this trivia so I can be ready for Danbury Fields. There you go. <laughs> and uh, lots of uh, interviews with people connected to the Beatles, all there on the website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. You can email me at everylittlething at att.net. I think that just about covers everything. I think that does, too. And one more time, what's your website, Charles? www.fab4, that's the number four, fab4musicfestival.com. Okay. Charles, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Charles. All right. This has been great having Charles Roseney with us. This is Ken Michaels for Things We Said Today, thanking each and every single one of you for listening. And I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying we will see you next time.